keeping with the trend of totally random gotcha selections that definitely aren't inspired from some other source, today we're going to cover Azami. Azami is an Aether Cannon class blade who has a very interesting playstyle and niche very different from other cannons and other blades as a whole. This niche has carried her into being a solid B-tier blade and can make her very strong in the right circumstances. I think she is a great example of a blade not very good for general use at all, but super strong with her specific niche that can make her output some incredible damage. In this video, we're going to take a look at Azami, discuss all of her strengths and weaknesses, and how to use her the most effectively. If you enjoy this type of guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of the future blades, both good and bad, because it does help out so much. So Azami is an Aether Cannon class weapon, and every move she has is Aether based. She is a blade that functions very well on Zeke and sometimes Nia, although there's something about Nia that makes Azami less effective than normal with her, which we'll discuss a little bit later. As such, I recommend using Azami on Zeke. As a cannon blade, Azami can reach a pretty high auto attack stat, maxing out at 1594 along with a middling critical hit rate that maxes at 20% and a pretty bad block rate as well. Her defenses are also not that great with 0% physical defense and 15% ether defense. This can actually be a good thing for Azami though because of how unique she is as a blade. She gives a 15% ether mod to her driver which is a good mod for ether cannon as you might imagine and has a cooldown of 5 when maxed out giving her a lot of availability. Let's take a look at what makes Azami unique by checking out her skill tree. Azami's first skill is Vendetta. This will counter attacks with 180% ether damage at level 1, rising up to 300% at level 5. This means that when Azami evades an attack, she will do 300% of the driver ether stat back to the enemy which is like 2000 at most. Considering Azami isn't even an evasion tank and the skill just does very poor additional damage in general, it's a pretty awful skill for Azami to have. It serves zero purpose, and the extra damage, even if it does activate, is negligible. Evasion isn't good on Azami for other reasons as well, so all around the skill really sucks. Azami's second skill is Pain of Longing. This will increase her affinity by 15 when a fellow driver takes damage at level 1, rising up to 30 at level 5. Affinity maxes out at 1000, by the way. This doesn't really do anything if you have Hunter's Chemistry to instantly hit max at the start of battle, but if you don't, then this can be an okay skill to get there faster. If you die and get revived in other characters of aggro, this can also allow you to get back to max affinity quicker, and with a zombie, there is a real chance you could be dying a lot, so there's one benefit to that skill. I don't think this is a skill that's really that good, just because it's already easy to get max and Hunter's Chemistry really invalidates the skill, so her first two skills aren't really that great, so what is it that makes a zombie stand out? Well, her final skill is all for love. The lower the health of her driver, the more powerful her special is. Same description all five levels, and this has a very unique formula. It is, parentheses, the value of the skill, raised to a second set of parentheses, 1 plus 0.5, raised to the percentage of your missing health, close both parentheses, and then plus the, the percentage of your missing health again. So, what the heck does that mean? Well, 1.136 is going to be the value of the skill at level 5. And the only other thing you really need to know is the percent of missing health, and then you can actually plug it into that formula and solve for whatever damage you currently have based on the percentage of missing health you have. This will cap out at 766% if you have 1 HP out of 9,999. 9, it is exponential, so the closer you get to 1 HP, the better your damage will get, and the multiplier will go up more as well. It does count as additive damage, but this also makes it the largest additive damage increase in the game if this condition is met, but only for specials, of course. This can make her specials hit extremely hard when you're low on health, so hard in fact this skill pretty much carries a zombie and is what makes her a B tier blade. This skill combined with her specials and chain attacks makes for a significant amount of damage you can do with minimal setup. You can hit damage caps without fusion combos even, and a zombie can become one of the best chain attack blades in the game. Now the thing about this is that it can be very inconsistent. With the hidden driver skill trees you only get about a 50% chance to live with 1 HP, 1 time, and it's always dangerous to be low on health in general, so this can be very risky to use and usually requires very specific setups to make work very well, but if you can set her up properly, she will not disappoint you. Speaking of her specials, let's talk about those now. First thing of note, the bonus effect on every special she has is increasing damage in under 30% health by another 150%, which can give you over 900% extra added to damage on specials just when you add this effect to the Pain and Longing skill. That's a huge damage increase, and when playing a zombie, is likely what you're going to be aiming for. Under 30% health is the magic number before trying to chain attack. As far as the specifics on these specials, her level 1 is Nightmare Rondo. 
This is a 5 hit special with a pretty good area of effect, so it can be used to great effect in chain attacks, where you need to hit multiple enemies, and it can be a very strong option in those. It's also a pretty fast level 1, and it has 5 hits. It's a great option for chain attack when you can actually hit damage cap on those 5 hits. The damage ratio is the 480 damage ratio a majority of level 1 specials have, and it doesn't have any special modifiers, but it doesn't really need them anyway. This special is a good special that, when used in the right situation, can hit very hard and kill multiple enemies. Azami's level 2 special is Shadow Rhapsody. It's another decently fast special, and it's 10 hits, which is a very high hit count for a level 2 and very useful. It has a small radius compared to the level 1, but with its speed, hit count, and power it has, that doesn't really matter all that much. It's a great special for chain attacks, even despite the damage ratio being a bit below average at only 580 when maxed out and at max affinity. Having 15 hits between her level 1 and 2 specials is one of the highest totals in the game, and it couldn't be on a better blade. Azami's level 3 special is Decadent Finale. This has another low damage ratio, maybe as a form of balancing since it will only reach 680 at max affinity when maxed out, but it's also a 10 hit special and still really powerful. This time it even comes with a 25% critical hit mod, which is also useful. It's not as fast as their other specials, but it's still another 10 hits that are easy to damage cap, making it another solid option, especially if you're doing a 3 round or more chain attack. This special also counts as a projectile, so you can launch it before starting a chain attack to get some additional damage similar to Herald's level 1 and Scattershot. This also increases the zombie's total hit count to 25, which I think may be the second highest total hit count for special moves in the game, second only to Elma. That's very impressive and can potentially allow Azami to get 25 damage capped hits in a 3 round chain attack. Very powerful with her ability to boost her damage of special moves so high. Her specials and her all for love ability really allow Azami to shine as a high damage chain attacking blade. But what about her level 4? Well level 4s can't be used in chain attacks without a full burst which isn't really what Azami is all about, but you can also use a level 4 when low on health to do a decent amount of damage that way, so that would be the main purpose of it. Azami's level 4 is Evil Ensemble. This comes with a 40% critical hit modifier, and it again has one of the lower damage ratios we've seen of only 900 total. Whether this was a form of balancing, I have no idea, but Azami can still get some very impressive special damage, so it's not a major issue. This is a good option if you're low on health and need to block an attack and preserve your low on health status for a chain attack that's almost up or something because of the invincibility, and it can also be used to set up fusion combos for chain attacks as well. All around, Azami may not have the highest damage ratios on her specials, but her ability to do a lot of damage with them at low health and the high hit counts make them great options regardless. For setting up Azami, I am actually running the Prion chip since it gives the highest auto attack stat of any core chip. Moon Matter can add another 7% critical hit rate, but that isn't super important since critical symbols do exist for chain attacks, so maxing out attack is probably going to be a better option for maxing out damage. Tachyon doesn't do much extra, so I'll take the 14 attack over the 1% critical hit rate since the bonus effect is not very useful. For Ox Cores, I'm running Specials Level 2 Plus since it's 10 hits, and the hits will have damage distributed more than the Level 1, so this can ensure the most chain attack damage, and then Affinity Max Attack because it's a great general boost to damage. You could also run Outdoor Attack up, but make sure to stick to Offense for Azami. She doesn't really do well with Defense or Utility options. For my accessories, I am naturally running a Burst Symbol to increase the ratio of chain attacks on her specials so they hit as hard as possible. And the other two drivers are also going to have burst symbols as well. I am also running a bisque mask because I actually want to take damage to get low on health, and a 110% attack boost is additionally nice. This helps Azami out quite a bit. My final accessory is Crimson Headband. Yes, cannons have a low critical hit rate, but at least one ally will have a critical symbol, so you get an additive 54% critical hit rate in chain attack, so Azami can really benefit from this independent multiplier, boosting all of her additive damage even further. You can also consider running a Revival Pod since that gives you another 50% chance to survive with 1 HP one time, which can be very useful for a zombie if you're doing, doing specific chain attack setups. You can also consider Crystal Earrings if you just want to get Party Meter really fast if you think, think you'll take enough damage really quickly, but other than that, I wouldn't really recommend other utility options on a zombie either. For pouch items, since we're all about chain attacks and special damage, I'm running Astrology Made Simple since a zombie likes books and can always use another damage increase, and the Torgoth Snow Pouch for a more special damage and some special recharge. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Azami practically. So first things first, I'm going to just show off a bit of Azami generally. Once again, I don't really recommend using Azami generally, just because she doesn't have nearly the amount of damage that um, the other Aether Cannons do, just in a general sense. They can reach additives much more unconditionally. 
Azami is all about her very specific damage from her specials when she's low on health, I would say. And she can actually outdo those blades if you meet the right conditions for that. But when it comes to general use, sure you can have a little bit of extra special damage if you lose some health in certain fights, but overall just general Azami is not going to be nearly as reliable as Chain Attack Azami because being low on health in a general fight means you're going to be getting some aggro, it means you're going to be possibly be at risk of dying and all that other kind of stuff, so it's just much more difficult to use Azami in that sense. You'll also just notice that your damage on arts is very, very unimpressive and just you're not going to be doing much damage at all that way. It's much better just stick to Azami's specific niche and as such I would say just don't focus on using Azami just like a general blade. She doesn't really offer anything. Sure she can get max affinity kind of quickly, sure she can do that little spike damage if you somehow manage to evade attacks with her, but it's never going to be anything ultimately that useful and even if you get to low health, sometimes if you have a healer, that's going to invalidate most of Azami's damage. And if you don't have a healer, you're just going to be at risk of dying. So it's just it's just hard to um, say that Azami's really good outside of a very specific niche of chain attacking when you're low on health, which is very specific to set up. You're going to want to try to set that up ASAP in most fights and then just chain attack once you're at 1 HP if you've got the revival pod um, skill or accessory. So I'm going to show that off now, how we can just kind of instantly go for that once we um, get ourselves set up properly. I'm going to use Ray of Light with Tora so we can get all three rounds of the chain attack here, which is going to be very um, cool to show off just how much damage you can get with a zombie. Now, the thing about having a critical symbol is it doesn't give you 100% critical hit rate. You would have to run two if you want to get one to 100%. When you do crit, you do get a damage cap, as you see, but if you don't crit, you'll do about 700,000 instead. Even with, without a fusion combo, keep in mind if you had a fusion combo here, you would hit damage cap with it, which is just incredible. No critical hits, and you still hit damage cap just because of how insane the multiplier is. And we're going to be able to see, um, more specifically on this 10 hit level 2, just how what a zombie is really capable of. You can see the damage caps coming in on with the critical hits there. And that's just um, a lot of damage you can out. But Tyranitite is already dead, but you know, we're going to kill him even further. We're going to get that... Bonus overkill just for fun here, and see what Azami's level 3 is capable of. Well, if level 2 can hit cap and level 3 has a higher ratio and the same amount of hits, then obviously level 3 should be able to hit cap too. But without a damage cap, I or without a critical hit, I still believe you'll be hitting close to damage cap on this special as well. It looks like I got damage cap without a critical hit on that special, even though it was 10 hits. But the block did not get that. So, more specific setups for Azami. You're going to notice that on really annoying enemies that have high defense, like this... Aya, it has 50% ether defense, but Azami can just brute force through that. This is actually a really good challenge to use Azami on because of the poison swamp. You can live with 1 HP pretty easily and then go for some really high damage here. We're going to be able to get easy damage caps on the level 1 special there. And yeah, Azami is really just a very powerful chain attack blade who can come in a really clutch against certain enemies and just be extremely useful to you. Like, this level 2 is going to give us all the damage we need to kill this enemy, I believe. And... Yeah, that's going to be it. Pretty much a lot of challenge mode enemies you can do very well against if you can manage to get low on health and then chain attack them. I can additionally show you how useful the AoE on Azami's level 1 is against multiple enemies. You don't even need fusion combos for something like this. You can just make sure Azami gets low on HP by um, giving her aggro. I have her purposely underleveled here. Morag's only level 60, just so she takes even more damage so she gets to 1 HP even faster, which can be a strategy in certain fights. So then you get the um, ability to kill both enemies at the same time here, which is really nice, as you can see. And this also works on Jin and Malos and Syria Showdown. I don't get quite as low on, of HP on um, Zeke here, but that doesn't really matter because we're still able to get a ton of damage with Omni um, Level 1 Special here. All we're going to need to make sure we can finish this fight. With 1,100 HP, we're able to get a decent amount of damage to Level 1. It might not have been anything super impressive, but it was enough to finish them off on normal mode here. So even when you can't hit damage caps, you can still get quite a bit of damage as long as you can manage to get just under 30% health. So in this final little section, I want to showcase what happens if you use Nia with a zombie. So Nia has a skill tree effect that restores a little bit of health every time you chain attack. As you can imagine, this kind of sucks for a zombie because you don't want her losing health when you chain attack because you want her to be as low health as possible to as much damage as possible. So if you plan on using Nia, you need to be able to brute force through getting extra health and losing a bit of your added to damage total. And in order to do that, you're going to need to set up some powerful fusion combos. But if you manage to do that, you can still hit damage cap. I believe Nia is still under 30% health here, and that's a good thing. 
Credit to my friend Spalt for this specific footage in here. I just wanted to show off this chain attacking with Nia here. And yeah, you can still brute force that and still get a ton of damage with a zombie in certain situations. This is only a one orb chain attack, but you can actually set up two orbs on King Ken and get 25 million damage with a zombie, which is half of its health with just a zombie alone, which is very, very impressive. Because that would just be a two orb chain attack and only one character. And you can make up the other 25 characters with your, or other 25 million with the other two drivers and have a pretty easy two orb chain attack to finish him off. Or you can do a one orb chain attack like this and finish him off that way as well. That is another option you can do. A zombie is pretty much just a phenomenal chain attacking blade. And any chain attack setup you want to do, and if you want to consider a zombie for, if you can manage to get low on health, she is a fantastic option for getting as much damage as possible. I don't have much more to say about her, so I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And I hope you all learned something useful about how to set up a zombie and use her in her more specific situations where she can actually be a really good blade, because I know a lot of people probably don't use her that often or haven't really considered this niche of hers. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you. If you enjoyed this guide, please look forward to all of my future guides and make sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching and have a blessed day.